The Shroud of Turin is this amazing relic. This cloth has fascinated believers and skeptics for centuries. A simple piece of linen, yet it holds a mystery that spans history, faith, and science. For centuries, the Shroud of Turin has become one of the most mysterious and controversial pieces of cloth on the face of the planet. Known as the Shroud of Turin, it bears the faint image of a man who seems to have endured unimaginable pain. It shows a very faint sort of image of a crucified man. Could this fragile fabric be the final evidence of a man whose story changed the world? For years, science has struggled to explain how the image formed, while new DNA research is revealing clues hidden in its threads. Experts have spent years recreating what they believe to be the mystery man under the shroud. Today, we journey through time, science, and faith to explore the secrets woven into this legendary cloth. The enigmatic cloth that defies time the Shroud of Turin is not just any piece of fabric. Stretching over 14 feet long and nearly 4 feet wide, this linen cloth holds a mysterious imprint unlike anything else in history. It shows the faint, sepia-toned image of a man, his face weary, his body marked by wounds that tell a story of suffering. What makes this cloth so extraordinary is how the image appears. It's not painted or stained in any known way. Instead, the figure is like a photographic negative, revealing details only when viewed through modern technology. The wounds align perfectly with descriptions of crucifixion, nail marks through the wrists, bruises from a crown of thorns, and a deep wound on the side. The shroud is housed today in a cathedral in Turin, Italy, but its origins reach far back, lost in the shadows of history. The earliest clear record dates to the 14th century, but many believe it traveled across continents before arriving there. Over the centuries, the shroud has sparked awe and skepticism alike. Could this be the actual burial cloth of Jesus Christ? Or is it a medieval forgery? Scientific efforts have tried to unravel its secrets, but the more we learn, the deeper the mystery grows. Science meets mystery, the quest to understand the shroud. For centuries, the shroud of Turin has been a puzzle. How did this detailed image form on the linen without paint or dye? When photography was invented, a startling discovery emerged. The shroud's image behaves like a photographic negative. This meant that light and shadow on the cloth revealed far more than the eye could see. It was a revelation that added fuel to the debate. Some saw proof of a miracle, others suspicion of clever trickery. In 1978, a team of scientists known as the Shroud of Turin Research Project embarked on a thorough examination. Using X-rays, infrared scans, and microscopes, they searched for clues. They found no pigments or paint that could explain the image. Even more surprisingly, the image was confined to the surface fibers of the cloth, only a tiny fraction of a millimeter deep. Then came radiocarbon dating in 1988, which seemed to settle the matter. Tests dated the fabric to the Middle Ages, between 1260 and 1390 AD. The results suggested it was a medieval creation, not a relic from biblical times. But the debate didn't end there. Critics pointed out flaws in the sampling. Some argued the tested corner was patched centuries later, skewing the dates. Science has taken one step forward and two steps back. The shroud remained a mystery, its true origins hidden beneath layers of history and skepticism. The shroud's hidden story, DNA unlocks new secrets. While carbon dating sparked controversy, modern science opened a new door. Advances in DNA technology gave researchers fresh tools to study the shroud beyond just the fabric itself. Dust and microscopic particles collected from the cloth became a treasure trove of genetic clues. Through DNA analysis, scientists began to piece together a hidden biological map, one that spans centuries and continents. In 2015, a team led by Professor Johnny Barcaccia from the University of Padua applied cutting-edge genetic methods to dust vacuumed from the shroud decades earlier. What they found was astonishing. DNA traces from plants native to the Mediterranean and Middle East, including a thorny plant believed to be the crown of thorns. They also discovered pollen from the Jerusalem region, linking the cloth to the place where the biblical crucifixion occurred. Even more intriguing was the human DNA. Genetic markers pointed to a mix of people from Europe, the Middle East, East Africa, and Asia, 
a genetic footprint suggesting the shroud traveled a vast and complex journey. The presence of Middle Eastern DNA, especially from groups common in the Levant, challenged the idea that the cloth was simply a medieval European forgery. These genetic discoveries didn't just add layers to the shroud's story, they forced scientists to rethink everything. Suddenly, the cloth wasn't just an artifact, it was a living record of human history, faith, and mystery woven together. Bloodstains that speak, the shroud's biological evidence. Bloodstained pattern analysis has shown Jesus' wrist wounds are realistic if he was crucified with his hands high above his head. Among the shroud's most striking features are the bloodstains, dark marks that correspond to wounds on the image. For years, these stains have been a source of intense debate. Were they real blood or simply pigments applied by a forger? Recent DNA studies brought new clarity to this question. Specialized techniques extracted genetic material from the blood spots, revealing predominantly male DNA with markers common in Middle Eastern populations. This matched the geographic clues found in the plant and pollen DNA. What's more, the blood showed signs of severe trauma. High levels of substances like bilirubin and creatinine, consistent with someone who suffered intense physical stress before death. Researchers also found rare genetic markers linked to certain isolated Middle Eastern communities, including Jewish populations. This fits the narrative of a burial cloth from the Levant region during ancient times. The blood type was identified mostly as AB, a rare blood group that appears more frequently in the Middle East. These biological details align uncannily with the image on the cloth, wounds on the wrists, feet, side, and head matching biblical descriptions of crucifixion. While skeptics suggest medieval forgers could have used real blood, the complexity and degradation patterns of the DNA suggest something far older and more authentic. This living evidence challenges simple explanations. The bloodstains seem to tell a story of a man who endured brutal suffering, a story frozen in time on a cloth that still fascinates the world. Tracing Origins the Middle Eastern genetic signature. One of the most compelling pieces of the Shroud's puzzle lies in the genetic signatures embedded deep within its fibers. Multiple DNA studies have revealed a strong presence of Middle Eastern markers, both human and botanical, that point toward the Levant region, the historic land of Jerusalem. The human DNA includes Y chromosome groups J1 and J2, which are most common in populations of the Middle East today. Alongside this, mitochondrial DNA linked to Mediterranean and Jewish populations was detected, including a rare subgroup often found among some Jewish communities. These findings hint that some of the Shroud's original biological material may have roots tracing back to the time and place of Jesus. Plant DNA furthers the connection. Species such as Gundelia tournifortii, a thorny plant thought to be used in the crown of thorns, along with Christ's thorn jujubee, and other flora native to ancient Jewish burial customs were identified. Even the bacteria on the cloth point to soils around Jerusalem and the Dead Sea, environments with unique microbial life. The combined presence of these Middle Eastern genetic and environmental markers is striking. It suggests the shroud is more than just a European medieval relic. It bears the biological imprint of a region and culture consistent with biblical times. This evidence fuels the debate offering a powerful, scientific argument for the Shroud's ancient origins and its profound connection to the land of its purported subject. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. A Journey Through Time – The Shroud's Global Footprint While Middle Eastern markers dominate the Shroud's biological story, its DNA tells a broader tale of travel and passage. The genetic evidence reveals traces from Europe, Asia, North Africa, and even India, reflecting a remarkable journey that spans continents and centuries. European DNA is abundant, unsurprisingly, since the shroud has been kept in Italy and France for hundreds of years. Haplogroups common throughout Western and Southern Europe appear frequently, likely from those who handled or came near the cloth over time. More surprising is the presence of East Asian genetic markers from China, Mongolia, and Korea. This suggests the Shroud might have traveled along the Silk Road, the ancient trade route connecting East and West, before arriving in Europe. Historical records mention a relic called the Mandalian, or Image of Edessa, once kept in Constantinople, which some believe could be the same cloth. 
DNA from North African populations, including Berber and Egyptian groups, adds another layer. This matches the historical veneration of relics in early Christian Egypt. Perhaps most fascinating are the genetic traces linked to India. Both human DNA and plant material from Indian cotton varieties were found, supporting theories that the linen or its materials may have origins connected to ancient trade routes extending to the Indian subcontinent. This global DNA mosaic aligns with the Shroud's complex history, a relic not bound to one place or time, but a silent witness to centuries of faith, trade, and human movement. Separating Ancient Truth from Modern Contamination One of the greatest challenges in studying the Shroud of Turin is untangling the original genetic material from centuries of contamination. Millions have touched, kissed, and studied this cloth, leaving behind a complex biological trail. How can scientists be sure which DNA belongs to the Shroud's ancient origins and which is recent? Researchers use several clever techniques. First, they map where DNA appears on the cloth. Genetic material found near the bloodstains and image areas may be ancient, while DNA clustered at the edges or corners, places frequently handled, likely represents modern contamination. They also analyze how degraded the DNA is. Ancient DNA breaks down over time in predictable ways, showing specific chemical changes and fragment sizes. The more damaged and fragmented, the older it is. In the shroud, Middle Eastern DNA shows these ancient degradation patterns, while European DNA appears fresher. Scientists compare the DNA on the cloth to samples from known handlers, such as scientists and conservators, to filter out their contributions. Advanced methods like laser microdissection allow for the examination of DNA embedded deeper within the fabric fibers or blood particles, offering better chances to detect original material. Despite these sophisticated approaches, absolute certainty remains elusive. Yet statistical patterns and multiple lines of evidence give growing confidence that much of the Middle Eastern DNA on the Shroud is authentic, a genuine biological echo from antiquity. Revisiting Carbon Dating – Conflicting Clocks Radiocarbon dating in 1988 placed the Shroud's origin between 1260 and 1390 AD, suggesting a medieval creation. However, recent biological evidence challenges this timeline. DNA from plants native to the ancient Near East, now rare or extinct, has been found on the cloth. Pollen analysis points to Jerusalem area species that have evolved over millennia, hinting at a greater age. DNA degradation patterns in the blood also match samples thousands of years old, rather than medieval centuries. The carbon dating sample came from a patched corner, which was suspected to be a medieval repair with different weaving and chemical traces like vanilla that don't match the main cloth. Fire damage and microbial contamination may have skewed the dating results, making the cloth appear younger than it is. Although the Vatican has not approved new testing, these clues urge scientists to reconsider the medieval date. The shroud's true age may be more complex, possibly a mixture of ancient fabric and later repairs. The Blood's Silent Testimony more than a relic. DNA analysis of the Shroud's bloodstains reveals a deeper story. Beyond confirming human blood, researchers found signs of severe trauma consistent with crucifixion, such as high bilirubin and creatinine levels, indicating extreme physical stress before death. The blood's genetic markers align with Near Eastern populations, including groups with Jewish heritage, supporting the biblical connection. Most tests identify blood type AB, which is rare but more common in the Middle East. Some DNA sequences suggest rare genetic disorders found in isolated Middle Eastern communities, hinting at a unique individual. Skeptics argue medieval forgers might have used real blood, but the degradation patterns show ancient DNA consistent with samples over two millennia old. Blood distribution matches the wounds on the shroud's image, wrists, feet, side, and head, suggesting the blood and image are linked rather than separate. Though controversy remains, the blood's evidence challenges simple forgery theories, portraying a man who suffered greatly and remains immortalized on the cloth. The Future of Shroud Research – Unlocking the Ancient Mystery The Shroud of Turin remains a captivating enigma, with new technologies poised to uncover more secrets. Single-cell DNA sequencing may isolate genetic profiles from individual blood cells, reducing contamination and clarifying origins. Paleogenomics could reconstruct ancient genomes, revealing unprecedented detail. Environmental metagenomics will map the Shroud's journey, 
by analyzing microbial and plant DNA from various regions. Combined with advanced imaging, this may clarify how the image and biological materials relate. New molecular clocks might independently date genetic materials, resolving age conflicts. Comparing flax fiber DNA to ancient linen samples may identify the cloth's origin and age. Proteomics, studying ancient proteins, offers another window into its history. Collaboration among geneticists, historians, chemists, and theologians will be essential. Access to new samples is critical, but one must balance scientific inquiry with the artifact's fragile nature. Many hope the Vatican will soon allow fresh, carefully controlled studies. Until then, the Shroud continues to inspire wonder, science, and faith worldwide. This fragile cloth has traveled through time, bearing silent witness to history, faith, and science. The Shroud of Turin remains a powerful symbol, part mystery, part miracle. With every new discovery, the story grows richer and more complex, challenging what we know about the past. Whether relic or forgery, it sparks wonder and debate in equal measure. As science pushes forward and technology evolves, we stand on the brink of uncovering deeper truths. The Shroud's secrets await, hidden in its threads, ready to reveal a story that could change everything we believe.